here and you managed to get into the side. Uh, earlier on, we saw a fantastic lineup of British armour. Leading up to the end of the war, we saw there we had our Centaur tank, which was uh, part of that Cromwell family. Uh, it is celebrating the centurion. We've got six factory pounder gun, and then they move on to the 20 pounder. Actually sold in the mid 1950s, it was part of a tranche of about 500 Centurions. The first ones went in 1953, the later ones in 55 to the Royal Netherlands Army, and they very kindly brought this one all the way over from their is in our World War II display. First biggest gun, 17 pounder. They tried the 77 millimeter we had on the Comet and they put a secondary armament of a Polston cannon on some of them. Very quickly after that Mark I Centurion, we put the 20 pounder gun. That's this gun that you can see on this variant of the uh, Centurion. And that is one of the reasons it's such a great tank. It's confusing, we stopped drop in the war years. The weight of shot, 32 pounds, was going to be another gun we were going to use, but we didn't. We posted the L705 millimetre gun, and we'll see that. in the background. We know about the JS-3, the Russian heavy tank. We found one in the ruins of Berlin. They've measured the armour. What's coming next is the question. What if they've got a bigger tank after the JS-3? When Stalin dies in the early 50s, they rename them, they forget Stalin's name, they call them the T-10 tank instead. We know the Russians have built about 2,000 of those. What if they get an even bigger gun than the 122 millimeter? that they put on the JS-3. What if there's going to be something bigger coming? So we start thinking, how can we increase our tank fleet and what gun might we be able to knock out the next generation of heavy Russian tanks? And that leads to the Kotsura tank that goes into service in 1955 with a 120mm gun on it. What if that gun's not enough as well? We might need a 180mm, I think, big enough gun to block out the future Soviet heavy So this is why we end up just being kind of out of our team for the future. from the 
Warsaw Pack come sooner than we expect. Pull that gun about 45 degree either side of the centre line so that uh, it won't go fire sideways because even with, you can see on the back there, they've got a ground anchor to anchor it into the ground. If you turn the gun 90 degrees, so much pressure you'll probably total turn the tank over. About 80 tonnes of back blast they measure it as every time that gun fires. This one would have had two 83 millimeter gun. That's this fellow here. The first iteration they try, same barrel, but they try an auto assist system. In other words, it's not quite an auto loader, but the rounds, the projectile and the case that keeps the, proje uh, the propellant in so big that we need some help loading them in the barrel doesn't quite work as effectively. So we decide we're gonna get two loaders, one to put the first part of the projectile in, followed by that big brass case. You heavy Soviet tanks start coming along a bit sooner than later. Let's make a turret in case we're gonna need that in a bit of a hurry. Hence, the second iteration we can see here of FP4005. This is what we might have had to build if the project had continued. They used the hull of a Centurion. It's not necessarily what it was going to go on. Mark III and Mark V Centurion hulls are used. It's just really to be able to take the thing around, see what it's like that way. And uh, you can see there just the scale of that size of turret that's needed. Basically, the turret will stop, stop small arms, not a lot else but that space for the two loaders. The support there to hold that gun in place, so it's not, that was missing for so many years. And if you look at the back, there's that round anchor. If it was gonna fire, you yeah, dropped the anchor behind you. That gave you a sense of solidity. Uh, so the vehicle wouldn't have to You could do the same thing with missiles. So let's drop that. But I know a number of you here have helped support the restoration of it. B4005, thanks very much for that. Uh, well, the tanks, it's a big area. But there we are, with the guys and the that's in there, they put that back together again. They do tremendously well there. They completely outclass the T-3485s. The fire. So lots of countries come to Britain to say, can we buy Centurions off you? And of course, Britain is desperate to sell them. We're a bankrupt nation. We've lost all our money in World War II. If we can sell tanks, that's the way we can make money again. Called the L7105 gun, and we can see it on a couple more of the Centurions here. Um, it's a fantastic bit of kit because what happens is it's so effective that it makes things like the 120 gun on the uh, Conqueror, the big heavy tank we made, makes it redundant overnight. And when it's about the first time we've got enough spare that we can actually sell them. The Swiss first put in their order for Centurions in 1950. And as they're waiting, they buy some AMX 13s. We'll see one of those later as well. Thank you. 
Paul and the set Fury in Sweden. They put a diesel engine, continental diesel in the back. They add Now this Centurion has got a different gun to that earlier Dutch 20 pounder arm Centurion. The reason for this is in 1956, in the Hungarian uprising, a captured T-54A tank was driven into the British Embassy compound. The British defence attaché was able to crawl all over this vehicle and they measured the frontal armour. The message goes back to Britain. Hang on a second, we might have a problem here. This is thick armour on that uh, new T-54A. One of the best tanks in service all around the world. Sees action in the Korean War, makes its name there. That's why, why lots of people want to buy it. Um, it sees action in Vietnam with the Australian forces. It sees action in the Indo-Pakistan War of 1965. More modern American pattern tanks go out to fight the Indian Centurions. They're absolutely creeped by the Indian crews because the Indians have been trained at Lulworth. They can fire three rounds quickly. The more they can get three rounds off before the pattern tanks could even fire back. Um, so it's also about the training of the crews. By the way, it's a Mark 13 Centurion, the last of the gun tanks in British Army service. Uh, obviously, all these different upgrades, different times. We get this is the tank they really wanted to buy off of Britain. They were still a bit miffed with the Swiss for being so neutral in World War II. For giving extra power, and so other countries copied the idea. 
So we've got there a Swedish Centurion. See how it sounds so different if you're listening to these things. And that, again, we sell this to Sweden. It's got a lot of upgrades because the Swedes keep their tanks in service quite some time. Up to about the 2000s or the early 2000s. It's called a Street Farmers 104 in this configuration. And it's got a brand new engine. You can hear the Thank <laughs> you. 